Welcome to my presentation for the Baby Feed Timer. My name is Orchid Chong and this is for Brahman University. Feeding is widely promoted because of the special bond between infant and mother and the nutritional benefits. According to Belfield and Kelly 2012, the World Health Organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, and Healthy People 2010 advocate that infants are exclusively breastfed for the first six months of life. Many studies have shown that breastfeeding is beneficial for the physical and mental health. This is compared to formula that does not have any specific nutrients per infant and also contains preservatives. However, even though many people agree with the health and bonding benefits, breastfeeding still has a steep learning curve that requires a large amount of dedication from the mother to ensure that the infant is breastfed. Breastfeeding challenges can be found throughout the world. Properly feeding an infant is extremely important for growth and development. Premature infants and failure to thrive infants are prime examples of patients who are affected by this feeding issue. Very premature infants or newborns who are 30 weeks or less already have an issue with coordinating suck, swallow, and breathing techniques. A study on co-regulated feeding from 2016 mentions, quote, feeding challenges continue into the post-discharge period at a higher rate of one-third of very premature infants reported to have feeding problems during the first year, end quote. So once the infant leaves the hospital, they continue to have feeding challenges. Failure to thrive is another common issue, accounting for 1.4% to 5% of admissions. If feeding challenge if feeding challenges were not an issue, many babies would grow and develop into normal, healthy lives. A longitudinal study on families, published by the American Psychology Association, found a stronger attachment from infants to mothers and an increased mother sensitivity the longer she breastfeeds. A qualitative published in Healthy Communication described a different social views on breastfeeding shown on primetime television. This is a good representative of how society views breastfeeding from day-to-day -day life. Breastfeeding is seen as natural and beautiful, but only under a private setting. Public viewing of breastfeeding makes people uncomfortable, and breasts are still seen as sexualized objects. One of the beauties about breastfeeding is the lack of financial costs. Many mothers naturally produce breast milk. However, cost does become a factor if the infant is bottle-fed. Whether bottle formula or breast milk, there's a cost to hold the milk in bottles or bags, store the milk in refrigerators or freezers, and then to reheat the milk for consumption. Mothers who work must provide an alternative method to breastfeeding as many turn to bottles. In regards to ethics, law dictates that work must provide a private location to breastfeed. There are many solutions to learn how to breastfeed. Hospitals provide a service where a lactation nurse assists with breastfeeding challenges. New breastfeeding mothers can also be taught the first 24 to 48 hours after delivery. Former mothers who have breastfed can also offer advice and tips to improve breastfeeding. One study tested on the benefits of co-regulating feeds. Here they attached a microphone to the infant and videotaped the mother feeding. Afterwards, the nurse and the mother would watch the video and help the mother see and hear the cues of the infant. This evaluation improves the mother's technique on feeding their infant. Another study trialed a lactation advice through text messaging. When mothers had issues, they would text message a lactation consultant to help their issues. This help provided support and assistance for breastfeeding. Such a service had a significant impact within the first 48 hours of life. app is breastfeeding on each side. You can start the feed. You click pause and then resume the feed. When you're ready to stop, you can simply switch over to the other side by clicking the other side. At the bottom section is a reminder. Here you can designate the left side or right side for reminders. At the very bottom of the screen has a menu. Currently, we are in the baby feed timer. If we choose the next icon over, logs, here is an activity log. 
At the very top is another menu for adding additional information. You can choose breasts, which allows you to manually input breastfeed timing. If you go back and click on the top left, baby's, baby's log, we can add bottle, breast milk, or formula. And let's put an arbitrary number down, so 20 milliliters, and save at the very top right. It goes back to the baby logs. We can even combine the feed by clicking on edit. And select the two feeds that you want, and then join selected. Here, it indicates that if an infant has been supplementing on bottled milk. The next addition is next breast milk to indicate how much a mother has pumped out. Going back, we'll now see more. Here, if you notice, we'll add multiple functions. Let's click on diaper. You can add urine, stool, or urine and stool. This app calls them wet for urine and dirty for stool. Now let's save a wet and dirty diaper. Notice how the app brings you back to the baby lock screen. But what if you put in the wet diaper by accident? You simply swipe left on the bar and click delete. And then in the log will disappear. Going back to add more functions, you can click on growth and add the weight and length of a baby. Let's put an arbitrary weight and length in. And then click save. <clears throat> At the bottom of the screen is an analysis section. Here's a summary of the infant's data for the last seven days. We can swipe left or right, which will show you the specifics for that day. If we go over to growth, at the top, we'll see the date of the last measurement. Notice how they even give you percentile. If you click on charts, top right, it'll go to summary data, then bottle, and then growth. And you'll see the plotted height and weight for this infant. If you click done, Go back to more at the bottom right and go to settings. Here you can add more or less kids. Go back, you can set your notifications, how you want the app to be displayed, and the kinds of units such as metrics in the support section. If we go back to more on the top left, you can export the logs as well. Here, this will give you exact data to whoever you choose to, like a pediatrician. Going back, and here is the baby feed timer. Franz Johansson describes the Medici effect as innovation and creativity happening at the intersection of various cultures and expertise. Here, I use this concept and interviewed three people about breastfeeding and the baby feed timer. First was a social worker who is a member of the Institutional Review Board at Walter Reed National Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. He was chosen due to his weekly engagement with reviewing research proposals and evidence-based practices in the United States military. His background includes administration, a communication major, and an information technology technician in college. The second interviewee is an eight-month pregnant mother of one child. She breastfed her first child and plans to breastfeed her future newborn. She was chosen because this app has the potential to make changes in her infant's health. She is also a prime example of an anticipated end user for the baby feed timer. Her career is a critical care nurse but is currently taking time off to raise her children. The third person chosen is a nurse shift manager in a labor delivery unit. She was chosen as a person who can influence the widespread adoption of baby feed timer.
She also helps manage the neonatal intensive care unit and the mother baby unit. She directly manages about 30 personnel and helps with the other 50 personnel of the other units. The general consensus amongst the three interviews is that the app is very helpful and a great idea. Many mothers are tired and have trouble keeping track of timing during their infant's feeding. Some rely on regular clocks, which become an issue in remembering when their baby fit started, and fall asleep during the feeds. Some stressful mothers need help in tracking smaller details, and this app creates a stress-free environment for accomplishing this. Professionals who work with the mothers can use this app to clarify what is healthy and guide the parents to healthy habits in a practical way. Hospitals and clinics can use this information to help troubleshoot an infant's intake and output challenges. Pediatricians can receive an accurate report of the infant's input, intake, and output instead of a generalized summary. Baby Feed Timer also helps with identifying medical issues. It is believed that they can help with weight issues, poor feeders, and jaundice infants. The track record is a real-life data and the information which can be used in research. The information does not violate any confidentiality laws since there is no login information or the request for demographic details. Their feedback and collaboration was helpful. I use this information to help research about premature infants, failure to thrive, and through different databases in other fields such as communication, psychology, and medical. By talking to the different resources, I gained another level of ideas and understanding about how this app is helpful with breastfeeding issues. My ideas of learning were very basic and simple, and that I was not able to see the different possibilities my interviewees came up with. This shows how imaginative various backgrounds can be if they came together. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you.